Good morning, friends in Christ. We are glad that you're joining us this morning for Mount Olive Live Facebook devotions as we continue to grow together in the word of our Lord. What a great gift God has given us, this word for us to be able to dive and dig into every day as God continues to speak to us. And so we are just thankful that on this beautiful sunny morning in central Wisconsin that you're joining us to do the most powerful thing that we can do when it comes to spiritual growth, and that is being in the Word of God. And so we pray that these devotions are a blessing to you. We know they're a blessing to us as we continue to grow together in the Word. And so this morning, we're going to get out our Bibles. We're going to open up to the first book of the Bible, Genesis, and we're going to turn to the end of that book, Genesis chapter 50. This week for our devotions, we're looking at cast of characters, the Bible heroes, and what we can learn about them is that, yes, they did heroic things, but the heroic things they did was because God was doing it through them, that they actually had flaws just like us. But God is so good and so gracious and chooses to use sinners like you and me and the heroes in the Bible to be a part of something bigger than ourselves, and that is kingdom work. Yesterday, we looked at Exodus. Exodus means exit. It's all about Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egyptian slavery to the promised land, and we looked at that yesterday in Exodus chapter 3 and 4, and Moses, as God called him through the burning bush, he had that question, who am I? And he had all these excuses, and God knocked them out of the park. And after all the excuses, Finally, Moses was just honest with God, and he said, I don't want to go. And God says, Moses, you're going. You can take your brother Aaron with you, but you're going, and I've chosen you to be the leader of the Hebrews and to lead them out of Egyptian slavery. Today, we're looking at Genesis chapter 50. We're looking at Joseph, what his brothers meant for evil, God used it for good. And what a beautiful trusting promise that you and I have, that in the messiness of life, no matter what happens, no matter how hard and difficult life and seasons may be, God can take the bad things of our life and use it for his good. And that's the promise to Joseph. And that's the promise that God makes to you and me. He uses everything for his glory. He can use our life. He can use our ups and our downs, and he can even use our death to glorify him and to bring people to the saving knowledge of our Savior, Jesus. So Genesis chapter 50, once you get there, go ahead and hit the share button as we continue to build believers to reach out and connect people to Jesus. Genesis chapter 50, we're looking at verse 15. And so, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, it may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. That, in one verse, says a lot about the story of Joseph and the relationship that he had with his brothers. We remember Joseph was the favored son. He had the ornamented robe. When they worked outside, he was inside with mom and dad. He had that dream that he was going to be elevated above not just them, but all of them and also the nation. And his brothers got angry and jealous. And remember, they wanted to kill him. But instead of killing him, they sold him into slavery after they tossed him in a pit. They tossed him in a pit. They were going to leave him there and let him die. But then they say, hey, you know what? We can get rid of him and even make money. And so we can do both those things and still accomplish our goal and come out ahead. And so they get him out of that pit. They sell him into slavery, and away Joseph goes. And as he's sold into slavery, we know that he is then falsely seduced and accused by Potiphar's wife. She makes the accusation as she was the cougar chasing him every day. He was always staying away from her, but this time she catches him in the house, grabs his cloak, and she makes a false accusation, and he's falsely accused. And he's thrown into prison. He's in prison for a long time. 
And when he's in prison, he is even forgotten and dismissed. Remember, he tells the cupbearer and the baker that, hey, I'm in here and I'm innocent. And so please, please, when you get out of here, tell them, tell them so I can get out of here. And, of course, they forget about him until finally Pharaoh has this dream and remembers that Joseph can interpret them. And Joseph interprets them, and then God raises him up. And then it's going to be the seven good years where they're going to store up stuff, and then the seven bad years. And so we remember, after those seven good years, Joseph in charge stores up all the crops. And so all the nations in this famine for the seven bad years have to come to Egypt for food to live. And here comes Joseph's brothers. And Joseph recognizes them, but they don't recognize him. And then Joseph lets them know who he is. And they go back to get dad and to get the brother. And as they come back, we remember Joseph forgives them. But now that dad has died, they think, you know what, maybe that forgiveness wasn't legit. Maybe he's still harboring evil against us. Now that dad's dead, he can pay us back. And they're thinking vengeance. They're thinking revenge. And now Joseph's in the spot where he's going to get revenge on us. And look how Joseph responds. He goes on to say, So they sent a message to Joseph saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. So they concoct a lie and a false letter saying that, hey, this is what dad said. This was his will before he died that you will forgive us and forgive the evil we've done to you. And so they think that even though he said he forgave us, now that dad's dead, he's going to pay us back. That's what they think. That's what they think of Joseph. And even though Joseph have had all these horrible things happen to him because of his brothers mistreating him, God used it all for good. And Joseph didn't get bitter. He didn't get angry. Instead, he trusted in the Lord and he did kingdom work all along the way. And his forgiveness was legit. And that's why he cries now. He cries because he says, when I forgave them, I didn't want them to harbor any of these feelings or emotions. I wanted them to have a clean slate and to live free of these burdens. And it's still burdening them so much so that they think that I truly didn't forgive them and they can cock this story. Verse 18, his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, behold, we are your servants. So they humbly come with mercy, begging for mercy before Joseph. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? Joseph is saying, Am I the one who sits in God's judgment seat? Vengeance is not mine. Vengeance is for the Lord. I'm just to be faithful and trust in God through the good times and the bad times, knowing that God is weaving this whole story together for a greater good and a greater kingdom purpose. And so Joseph says, I'm not the one who can sit in God's judgment seat. That's reserved for God alone. What a great statement of faith and how Joseph handles, especially the messiness of his life, the drama of his life, the hurt of his life that comes from those who are supposed to love him as most, his own family, and these horrible things have happened to him. He never got bitter and angry. He stayed faithful to the Lord, trusting that the Lord had a plan and that the Lord was working through all of this. He goes on to say, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God, he meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. You meant to hurt me and destroy me, but God used it for good to save the lives of many people. Through the seven good years and the seven years of famine, God has put me in this place for the saving of many lives. As you may have tried to take my life, God gives life and he cares about life. And he has used my life for a great kingdom work, Joseph says. So he goes on to say, verse 21, so do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. I'm going to provide for you, for your wives, for your families, and for your children. Thus he comforted them 
and spoke kindly to them in the midst of a past, a past of hurts and betrayal. Joseph didn't get angry and bitter. Instead, he stayed true to having godly faith and godly character, trusting in the promises of God. His forgiveness was legit, and his forgiveness even showed action. Action to prove that his forgiveness is true. I'm going to take care of you and your families and your little ones, and I'm going to comfort you, and I'm going to be kind to you. Know that this forgiveness and this grace is real. Isn't that awesome? That Joseph displays the grace and the goodness of our Lord and that the same promises that God made to Joseph is the same promises he makes to you and to me. As we go through this life, we don't go through this life unharmed. We're going to go through stuff. We're going to have wounds. We're going to have scars. We're going to have ups. We're going to have downs. And life is hard because we're sinful people in a sinful fallen world. And the devil is real. And he wants to seek, kill, and destroy us in this world of spiritual warfare. But the good news is that God uses every aspect of our life. And that he is the one who sits on the judgment seat, not us. We are just called to be faithful through it all. As God weaves it all together, the story of our lives and everything that happens to us. And what the world meant to use it to destroy us, the same as Satan, God uses it for good. And that is the goodness and the graciousness of God. And so we know today that whatever we've been through, God will use it to help us to grow, to prune us, to also continue to chisel us and shape and mold us to be the people of God. And that we are called to continually focus on the Lord and trusting in his promises and doing his kingdom work. And that we are called to be faithful, knowing that he is the one who is in control and that he has a plan and a purpose for our life. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, you know our story. You know every step that we have taken through this journey of life. You know our ups and downs, our turns, our twists, the things that we got right and the things that we got wrong. You know the hurts that we have done to other people. You know the hurts that we have received from other people and even the hurts that sometimes that we have done to our own selves. And yet through it all, through the hurt and the mess and the ups and the downs, Lord, you have been faithful and that you are weaving together our story as it's a part of a greater story, your kingdom story. And that what the world and the devil meant to use to take us down, you use it for our good, to help us to grow in our love and our trust in you. Lord, continue to lead us today and continue to work in our life and help us to focus on your goodness and your grace, knowing, Lord, that you are the victorious one and that you use everything for our own good so that it's for your kingdom's good. We ask this in the powerful name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. Friends in Christ, have a blessed Tuesday as we follow Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, trusting in his promises and his ways. Amen.